Welcome back. The town of Vernon and the AARP have started petitions fighting a proposed 19% hike in electric rates by Eversource. We're going to speak with the representative from Eversource in just a few minutes. But first, we want to speak with Michael Picaro. He's the Vernon Town Administrator. Also here, John Erlinghauser. He's the Associate State Director for Advocacy and Outreach at AARP Connecticut. Thank you both for being with us. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Mike. Tell me about this petition. Why is the town in the petition against Eversource game? You know, people are angry. People are frustrated. People are struggling. Paycheck to paycheck, social security on fixed incomes. We keep hearing about it. The mayor and I decided we wanted to do something about it. So we started a petition. Good old fashioned, good government. Let the people's voices be heard. And we wanted to make it as easy as possible for people's voice to be heard uh, by Pura and state officials. So we started this petition. Now Pura, of course, the regulatory agency that's going to approve or deny this request. Between the two petitions, I know we're up over 14,000 signatures between the two of them. John, tell me about your petition. Why did ARP Connecticut get in on well, this? Well, you know, we have 600,000 members in Connecticut age 15 and older, many of them are on a fixed income, uh, struggle to, to make ends meet from day to day. We have inflationary pressures going on. And you know this rate case is not happening in a vacuum. It's on the backdrop of Connecticut water, Aquarian, uh, Connecticut gas, Southern Connecticut gas. UI had a previous rate case, so and just inflation in general. So our members are struggling, folks are struggling. It's a high cost of living state in Connecticut. And so, you know, we have to give a voice to the people who are, you know, living day to day, paycheck to paycheck, and that's what we're doing. Pura wants to hear from uh, residents about the proceedings happening before them, and we're making sure that we're combined giving a voice to those residents, and uh, we're having a big impact, we think, on this. And I do want to say you have a UI petition as well. So Absolutely. we're talking Eversource today, and they're going to be joining us, but if people live in the UI territory, they can go there as well. Yeah, they can They can go to aarp.org slash ct, and they can sign either one of the petitions depending on where they live. Oh, my I want to show an image because we have a, a picture of a billboard. In addition, you're not just starting a, a petition here. You're trying to get the word out that here it is on the side of the highway, sign Vernon's petition. You're trying to get people to go to your website and do it. So why the, the push and try to get sure. that word out? Because this is, this is what good government's all about, being a voice for the people. And we wanted, again, make this as easy as possible for people to, to have their voices be heard. Look, this is a crushing, punishing rate increase, and it really is gonna push people over the edge. Some of the comments we've heard from people are heartbreaking. People are talking about having to unplug all the appliances in their house in order to pay for the bill now. A 19% increase, that could be make some people homeless is what we're hearing from from certain individuals and so we're, we're really doing this statewide it's not just a Vernon petition all are welcome to sign it we've had an overwhelming response from residents literally across the state of Connecticut and I just want to ask you we'll have Eversource to give us their side in just a moment but what we do know that they've said already is these are pass-through costs it's it's something that they have to be able to assess to the customer and it's pure as fault that they've all been delayed John do you have a reaction to that yeah, I do because you know that's why we have proceedings before regulators, right? I mean, they present their case. The public has their say. The Consumer Council, who represents ratepayers, has their say. We look under the hood. We examine all of the uh, filings that they've made. And uh, we get the input from the public. And then, you know, we ensure that they don't get one penny more than they're entitled to, if they're entitled to anything. And that's what this is all about. And so people shouldn't be upset that the public is actually participating mm -hmm. in a process that they're supposed to participate in and was designed to get their input and participation. So, um, you know, let's have at it is what my, my reaction to that is. And if I may add to that, I, I couldn't agree with John Moore. I mean, look, I, I, here's what I see. I see record profits. I see uh, executive compensation, bonuses in the millions. In Vernon, if we have a budget issue, we go back to the drawing board. We use zero-based budgeting. We do the due diligence on behalf of the people to make thoughtful, compassionate uh, rate adjustments to our mill rate. And in Vernon, we haven't had a mill rate increase in six years. That's hard work. So my question to Eversource is, what are they doing to make their operations more efficiently, run more efficiently and effectively? What sacrifices are those executives making um, to, to help out the working people that they're asking to absorb this cost, which becomes a sacrifice to many of us. And I know you've both said you want people to leave their comments, and those comments will go along to Pura as well. So a quick and easy way for people to get in there, have their voice be heard, get before the regulatory agency. We only have about 30 seconds left. Can both of you tell me how to get to your petition? Mike, go first. Sure. You can, well, we make it as easy as possible. You go to the Vernon website, www.vernon-ct.gov, but you can show up at any one of our uh, town buildings, town hall, senior center, 
um, uh, library, and we have paper petitions as well. And you don't care where people live, whether they live in Vernon or Anywhere. not? Anywhere. All are welcome. And to how about yours, John? AARP.org slash CT. It doesn't matter if you're an AARP member. It's on our homepage right on the top. All right. Well, as I said, between the two petitions, uh, we're already up over 14,000 other municipalities and groups are talking about doing it, too. So a lot of people who do want to have a say, we appreciate you both being here. Michael Picaro, John, Erling, uh, J John Erlinghauser from AARP. I did it. See? You got it. Thank you both for being with us here on CT24. Thank, Thank you, Eric. So the question is, what does Eversource have to say about the petitions and why they propose this increase? Doug Horton is now in Studio A to address those concerns. He's vice president of rates and regulatory requirements for Eversource Energy. Welcome. Thank you. So tell me about this. Uh, the, the, the previous guests were saying that these are going to be crushing increases. What's Eversource's position? Understood that this is a large increase for our customers for sure. At first, it's important to understand that if you look at your Eversource electricity bill, more than half of that bill is comprised of programs that we are required to by the state of Connecticut to administer uh, for costs that we pay out and the costs then um, also uh, under the state legislature are required for us to, to collect those costs from our customers. That is what's driving the entirety of this increase that customers will see. Um, on our customers' bill, it is significant, um, and we at Eversource are really focused on trying to find ways to ensure that these increases can be more manageable for our customers in the future. I know you brought us a graphic, and we can show it that it's people, when they get their next bill, where to look on that bill to see what you're talking about. So you have it broken out here. If you want to look, uh, Doug, at the screen, you can see public benefits. So that's the section you're saying that comprises this, and people will see it right on their bill? That's correct. So customers will see about a $40 a month increase in their bill. Again, these are for programs that the state requires us to administer to pay these costs, which we have already done. And now these costs need to be paid for. And, and that is where that will appear on a customer's bill. So these petitions have been popular. Nobody likes to pay more for anything. And one of the things that, that the people uh, signing the petition seem to be saying is there's got to be some other way. We have to be able to find a cheaper way to do this. Is that something that's a possibility? Or as far as Eversource is concerned, this is just what has to happen? It absolutely is a possibility. But here's the thing. I think from Eversource's perspective, we're focused on real solutions to the problem. Um, and frankly, just kicking the can down the road is what's caused a lot of this problem. In the past, as we have paid for these programs, our rates have not been able to be uh, set by our regulator at a level to reflect those costs. It's resulted in these costs now piling up to the significant increase here. So we understand this is significant for our customers. We've proposed a number of solutions with our regulator um, in terms of how we can structurally change that process going forward. Uh, but we don't think that just just pushing them into the future is helpful for customers. It, it's what's caused a lot of this problem is the fact that our rates haven't been set high enough in the past based on the cost of these programs. Only about 30 seconds left, but one of the things that both our previous guests said was, listen, let's go to Pura. We'll have, we'll, we'll have customers will have their say, Eversource will have their say. What's your message to customers as that you know rate case comes forward? I think that customers obviously need to have a voice and in, in get involved in the process. I think it's important to understand, again, what's driving the cost of these programs. They're state-mandated programs. We make no money off of those programs, so we encourage our customers to get involved in the process with their state leaders and with Pura. And and we completely agree and support the notion of getting to a better place into a better structure so that we can avoid these significant changes, again, for programs that we're required to administer on behalf of the state of Connecticut. All right. Well, certainly there's been a lot of interest in this topic. Everybody gets that electric bill every month. We appreciate you coming in to explain and having the other side. Uh, Doug Horton, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me.